spiritual weapons can defeat spiritual strongholds. Dr. Tony Evans says the problems facing married couples are too serious to be solved with worldly wisdom. If you are rebelling against the authority of Christ over your life and over your home, don't blame God if your family's falling apart. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. Family problems are as old as the Garden of Eden, but today Dr. Evans explains how Satan can use ordinary conflict among family members as a spiritual weapon of mass destruction. Let's join him. Everyone under the sound of my voice is either in a family or is close to a family that is falling apart. Whether it's a husband and wife relationship that has become paralyzed, whether it's children who are living rebelliously, or whether it's a generational curse that you are under, reaping the harvest of things your own father did because you have fallen in line with their way of thinking and acting, or you have been so stamped by their impact on your life that you have brought those problems into your family and things that you perhaps said you would never do because your father and mother did them, you find yourself doing. Or perhaps it's a stronghold of a blended family where you have brought your kids and they have brought their kids and You've tried to work this thing out, but the influence of the other mates that you're no longer with or the resistance of a new parent by your kids or by trying to adapt to one another while you at the same time try to adapt to two different sets of children can create strongholds. Vice grips on the relationship that keep it from being what God intended. And yet you come to church every week and hear the word of God, are exposed to it, but the stronghold only seems to disappear for a moment. And so you want to throw in the towel, you want to go to the divorce court, you want to give up because you just don't see how in the world you will be released from this stronghold. The principle is clear. Only spiritual weapons can defeat spiritual strongholds. And often we apply spiritual weapons last and not first. What is the cause, first of all, the cause of family strongholds? Well, you heard it in your hearing in Genesis chapter 3. The deterioration of the first family, Adam was caused or initiated by an angel. Remember our series is spiritual warfare. And an angel disrupted the first home. For Satan is an angel. He came and he visited the first family and caused spiritual deterioration which led to relational deterioration. It wasn't relationships first that went bad. Between human beings, it was relationship with God that went bad. And it worked itself out in the human environment. So we can trace the first family breakup to an angel, and I would like to go on record as saying we can trace every family breakup in its root to an angel. Because Satan's premier goal next to destroying you is the destruction of your family. Now, it's interesting, Satan's methodology to bring a stronghold into this first family, and we know it was a stronghold because it flipped over to their children for Cain killed Abel. So this wasn't just a one-time argument. This became the foundation of the murder of siblings. The first thing Satan got to produce control of this first family was the reversal of biblical responsibilities and biblical roles. If I were to paraphrase the first six verses when Satan came to Eve in verses one through six and spoke to her, if I were to use a new terminology or a contemporary terminology, he said to her in her ear, women's liberation. He told her two very important things 
that are implicitly stated in the text, and that is, lady, you don't need God, and you sure enough don't need Adam. He got her to act independently of God. He got her to use her own reasoning and her own rationale to reverse God's ordained order and to think in terms of independence. He then, through that process, influenced Adam becoming a passive male, for verse 6 says that Adam was with her. He heard the conversation, but he did nothing about it. He, like many men today, stood on the sidelines. Eve took over the leadership. He became the submissive one. The roles were reversed, and Satan had an open door. Whenever roles are reversed in a relationship, you have set up the context whereby Satan can infiltrate the home. Marriage conflict was the result of the role reversal. The failure of Eve to remain in her role, the failure of Adam to remain in his role, opened up the door for the devil to take over both roles. And it was a disaster for the family. According to verse 7, they had to sew fig leaves up to hide themselves. For they became ashamed of each other, of themselves. And instead of openness and authenticity, there was hiddenness, secrets. You notice in the scripture that we read that they passed the blame. Adam, who was so excited about Eve a few minutes earlier, now says to God, it's her fault. And how many times have you said to God, yourself, your neighbor, your co-worker, it's her fault. It's his fault. If he wasn't like this, I wouldn't be like that. There was the passing of the buck. The woman says, it's not my fault. It's the devil's fault. And everybody passed the blame. Nobody was willing to pause and own up to their sin so that they could get it right. The curse was staggering because not only would the woman, verse 16, have problems in childbirth, but there would be conflict in the home. The husband shall rule over you. In other words, men would seek to control women by domination. Evil as it is, wrong as it is, men would seek to dominate women, and we're seeing far too much of that today. And the desire of the woman, the desire for a relationship, the desire for a partnership would become a battle rather than an automatic blessing. The man would now, according to verse 17, come home tired because he would have to labor all day and he would have to exert energy. So instead of coming home to serve his wife, he would come home to be served by her and that would produce conflict. All because of an angel, a battle that took place where the first family left God out. God did a gracious thing. It's often not viewed as a gracious thing, but in verse 24, it was the best thing God could have done. So he drove the man out, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he stationed the cherubim and the flaming sword, which turned every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. God acted kindly to Adam by driving him out. Why? Because in the middle of the garden was the tree of life. If Adam would have gone after he sinned and eaten of the tree of life, then he would have been permanently locked in to his sinful state and there would be no hope. If Adam would have been able to go and take Eve and eat of the tree of life, having rebelled against God, they would have been locked in to their sin forever and not have hope. And that's why I can come to you this morning with good news for you and your family. That no matter how bad the angel Satan has infiltrated your home, no matter how devastating he has been on your family and in the life of your children, no matter how horrific he has been and 
bringing chaos to your world, no matter how unblended your blended family seeks to be and how unblended it performs, because God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden and would not let them eat of the tree of life. They were not locked into their sin, which means that they could find hope in God's salvation. I have good news for your stronghold today if it is in your family, and it is in most families, and that is that there is another tree. Not only the tree that was in the midst of the garden, it was the tree that Jesus hung on. There's another tree. And while Adam and Eve didn't get the bite of that tree, because they were driven out that they might find life through another tree, you and I who know Jesus Christ have been introduced to a new tree. And if you've come to Jesus Christ, you've bitten of that tree, and that tree has given you life. The problem is, even though we've bitten of the right tree, Satan still knows how to get into our homes. The cause of family strongholds is satanic infiltration. Let me say that again. The cause of family stronghold is angelic infiltration. Satan or one of his minions infiltrate the family through the flesh or through the world or through your past or through any number of things and he exacerbates evil that is already present. Dr. Evans will talk about exactly how that happens when he continues our message in just a moment. First, though, I want to remind you that today's the very last day to take advantage of our pre-order special on Kingdom Marriage. It's Tony's latest book, and it builds on what you're hearing in our current series, focusing on why we need to follow God's agenda for husbands and wives instead of our own. If you pre-order your copy before the day's out, it'll come to you along with a whole package of free bonuses, like the audiobook of the bestseller Kingdom Man, read by Tony himself, the complete ebook version of Raising Kingdom Kids, a coupon code for 50% off anything in our online resource center, and free MP3 downloads of three brand new sermons on marriage from Tony. Again, this offer runs out today, so there's no more time to wait. Get the details online right away at TonyEvans.org. Right now, though, Dr. Evans is back with more of today's lesson. Let's join him. How does he do it? What are the conditions? a family stronghold, where you are locked into a problem you can't break out of. He uses a number of things. Let me give you a few of them. One of the vehicles through which Satan gets opportunity to bring a stronghold into your home is unresolved anger. Look with me at Ephesians chapter 4. Unresolved anger. He says in verse 25, Therefore, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. It is the prolonged buildup of anger that provides the steering wheel for Satan to turn a problem into a stronghold. Because he says in verse 27, for Satan, that becomes a what? An opportunity. And any counselor knows that many of the problems we face is due to unresolved anger. Where this verse was not applied, and not only did the sun go down on our wrath, the moon went down on our wrath, the decade went down on our wrath, and we won't get rid of it to the grave. Unresolved anger at that mate, at those children, at mom, at dad. And that unresolved anger gives Satan a stronghold in you. And not only does unresolved anger give Satan a stronghold in you, everybody else has to pay for what one person did. Suppose you were at a restaurant and somebody brought you a bill for $10,000, the sum total of all the receipts that... Uh, they took in or all the bills that were accumulated by all the people who ate in the restaurant and they expect you to pay it all. Your argument would be that's not fair for me to have to pay for what everybody else ate. And it's not fair for everybody in your world to have to pay for what one person did. And yet, 
Some of us are making our children's pay for what our daddy did. Some of you ladies are making your husbands pay for what your father did or on and on and on and on. It's not the problem that you're angry. The problem is that the anger has been left unresolved. Now, it's easy to say that. It's another thing to do it. Maybe by a letter. When you sit down and write, so-and-so, you hurt me deeply. But I cannot let your hurt control the rest of my life. And so for my benefit, I release you. It may be through a phone call. Because I care about me and my future and the way this thing is causing me to treat everybody else, for my sake, I release you. He uses another thing to destroy families and to bring them in strongholds. He uses rebellion. Rebellion means to go against God's authorized order of authority. Second Peter has some strong words about rebellion as it relates to angels and the angelic conflict and he ties it into people. And then I'll relate it to the family. Look at what he says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness reserved for judgment. And he didn't spare the ancient world. So he didn't spare angels and he didn't spare the ancient world doing Noah's time. And if he condemned, verse 6, Sodom and Gomorrah, reducing them to ashes, rescuing verse 7 lot. Then he comes in verse 10 and he says, and especially those who indulge in the flesh and its corrupt desires and despise authority. Daring self-will, they do not tremble when they revile angelic majesties. Whereas angels who are greater in might and power, verse 11 says, do not bring a revealing judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like unreasoning animals, born as creatures of instinct to be captured and killed, reviling where they have no knowledge, will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed. He says these people have no respect for powerful angels, and therefore they place themselves under the judgment of God. The point is simply this. Wherever there is rebellion against God's legitimate chain of command, there is God's judgment and not God's help. Mister, if you are rebelling against the authority of Christ over your life and over your home, don't blame God if your family's falling apart, ma'am. If you bought into the feminism lie, if you bought into the women's lib lie, and I'm not talking about equal pay for equal work, I'm talking about not respecting God's chain of command in the family, and if you've been so co-opted that you do not respect your husband's position, don't blame God if deterioration sets into your home. Because God must always operate by virtue of his chain if you're going to get his help to break your stronghold. God said in Exodus chapter 20, he said that down to the third and fourth generation could be cursed by the disobedient of the parents if the kids don't reverse it themselves because of what parents can hand over to their children. And many of us as families are not only messing up our lives, we didn't already ruin our grandchildren. Because we've set a series of events at work in our rebellion against God's authority that will show up in them. Let me give you an example of this in 1 Corinthians 11. His concern is the role of women in the church. But he lays out a principle here in talking about that that illustrates my point. He says in verse 3, but I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. So this even applies to Jesus. He's under the authority of the Father. Every male, every Christian male is under the authority of Christ, and every wife is under the authority of her husband. Now please notice verse 10. Therefore, the women ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Now that's interesting. 
He's talking about a woman doing something publicly in the service, and he talks about her having a covering over her head, but the reason he gives is because of the angels. The question is, what in the world does a woman having a covering have to do with angels? Everything. Here's what it is. If this woman in this particular church was reflecting a rebellious heart against her husband or against the male leadership of the church, and so she broke up into independent speech, unauthorized in order to assert her independence, as illustrated by the removal, oftentimes the woman wore a headdress and they would take off their covering as a way of refusing to submit to God's ordained authorities, that not only in Paul's mind did she rebel against her husband or the male leadership, she rebelled in the midst of angels. Because the Bible says when we come to worship, we join angels, Hebrews chapter 12. You say, well, what's the big deal? So I insulted angels. Let me tell you the big deal. When you insult angels because you show them you are rebelling against authority, then what you can bank on is that God will not supply you, lady, any angelic assistance in dealing with that man that you have to deal with. When a woman rebels against legitimate authority, she rebels against angelic assistance because angels are one of the primary ways that God comes and he provides help to his children. Another thing that will produce a stronghold in chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians is selfishness. He says in verse 3, let the husband fulfill his duty to his wife and let the wife also to her husband. And he says, stop depriving one another except by agreement for a time that you may devote yourselves to prayer and come together again lest Satan tempt you because of your lack of self-control. The husband was so selfish, he wouldn't meet the needs of his wife. The wife was so selfish, she wouldn't meet the needs of her husband. And that went beyond just the physical, but the things that lead up to the physical, the relationship that should eventuate in the physical. And he says, stop, verse 5, depriving one another. Except both agree, lest it become a vehicle for the devil. And so when husbands and wives go days and weeks and months without talking, you didn't just go mute on one another. You said, Satan, you're now welcome into my home. Because the devil is looking for an opportunity. You do not have to open the door for the devil. Unlock it. He'll open it himself. And he has infiltrated far too many families, far too many times. Too many of us want to get a divorce before we've dealt with the spiritual problem. Dr. Evans will come back in a moment with some final instructions about how to break a family stronghold. In the meantime, if you'd like to get the complete full-length version of today's lesson, it comes as a part of Tony's brand new 14-lesson compilation, Marriage Matters. Remember, if you contact us right away and help us out with a contribution of any size to help us keep Tony's teaching on this station, we'd like to send you all seven messages in Volume 1 of this set as our thank you gift. At the same time, don't miss your last chance to pre-order Kingdom Marriage and get all those free bonuses I told you about. Again, time is just about to run out, so be sure to contact us right away. All the details are waiting for you at TonyEvans.org. You can also call our 24-hour resource request line at 1-800-800-3222. That's 1-800-800-3222. Tomorrow, more from Dr. Evans on counteracting Satan's toxic influence on your family. Right now, though, he's back with one final suggestion to wrap up our time together today. So then, what's the cure? The cure for the family stronghold, the cause is angelic intervention in the family. The conditions, unresolved anger, rebellion, selfishness, all the vehicles through which he comes in. What is the cure? Nehemiah 4.14 says, fight for your family. Fight. Some of us haven't gone to war. We've tried, but we haven't fought using God's weapons. And I guarantee you, if you will fight using God's weapons, he can save a home that you don't believe is salvageable. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you. 